Greetings, greetings, welcome back. My name is Siobhan and this is The Comfy Couch on The Regular Network. Let's jump straight into today's episode. It is a little heavy. It's a little weighted down, so go get somebody to comfort you, to hold, to talk to after this is over, to communicate your feelings, because we're diving right in. It is absolutely no need to use discretion. It is all needs to be transparent, because this episode could save someone's life, and I'm praying that it does. We are going to be talking about suicide. Yes, we don't talk about it enough in the black and brown communities it needs to change there is such a stigma around mental health in itself when somebody comes out and says that they're suicidal or homicidal or they have bipolar or they struggle from deep depression mania anything of that sorts we looking at them sideways we giving them the eye we looking at them a little funny it's not funny It really does affect a lot of people generationally. I know that some facts say that it is hereditary, and it is, but remember that this channel comes from a spiritual sense, and everything that I say, it is backed up spiritually from what I believe in. This is not to sway or jay anybody from what you believe in. This is not what the Comfy Couch is for, because we respect all beliefs, all platforms, all roles, all everything, okay? Because we come from a place of love however i do know how to stand my ground about what i believe in and to agree to disagree healthily and that is the difference we have to learn how to agree to disagree without diminishing someone else's belief or their standards of what they believe in or how they feel or think okay that was a little that was a little breadcrumb little tidbit i gave y'all a little a little one-on-one okay all right back to the topic at hand Suicide is when someone makes the choice to take their life. Now, again, in our black and brown community, I honestly, until it happened to my family member, I honestly didn't know what it was. I was on my way in college to do journalism, writing, poetry, and all of this good stuff, ready to go be a behind the scenes journalist traveling the world, doing all of this stuff. And then, boom. Psychology comes into my life. I fall in love with it. It's so ironic how everything that I studied about psych and mental health, suicide just, I just went straight through it. I didn't think anything about it. I'm like, okay, that's when somebody takes their life. That's when they perish by by their own hand. It's it's martyring in um, a, a physical form. They're killing themselves. Okay, I get it. Until it happened to one of my family members, The lights didn't go off. When somebody said the word suicide, I was looking like, suicide? This side or that side? You sue? Like, what is it? It smacked me in the face, y'all, like a ton of bricks. And personally, for me and my family, I can honestly say that it is not easy when you are the loved ones that are left behind after your loved one has perished by their own hand to sit and deal with all of the thoughts and all of the emotions my loved one took his life by gunfire and when it was brought to the surface that that's how it happened I can say, and I know my family can vouch for me, that we were in shambles. You start to feel like you are nothing yourself. You start to feel like you are worthless. Suicide has a very unfunny way of being a conundrum. You have the person that takes their life. And in the same sense, it feels like even though you're still living, your life has been taken. The thoughts that he suffered with, my family started to suffer with. Now, we're not suicidal. 
the family members that are left to deal with it. However, to be honest, you start to think, oh my gosh, did I do enough? Oh my gosh, did I say enough? Oh my goodness, did I go see him enough? Did I pray enough? Did I make sure he knew that he was loved enough? Did I insert myself in his life enough? Nine times out of ten, in the beginning, the answer you get back to yourself is no. Okay? And that is a negative force that wants to keep you down. It wants to keep you in a deep, dark funk of depression where you stinking and don't nobody want to be around you and you just want to sit in the dark in your bed and curl up and cry all night, all day, every day. It's the enemy with his negativity and he wants to come to steal every good memory and every good piece of joy that you have with this loved one and we have to fight through it it's a daily fight however when you conquer it it is so worth it i'm telling you so back to my loved one we started to have thoughts of wow how many people have this really affected my loved one it was in and out of the jail system the prison system and in knowing that with me being a psych major and my family is in the medical field so they understand as well we were not privy to understand how that plays a factor in men's mental health oh my goodness men Whew. we need to take better care of our men especially the ones that have been in and out of the system, in and out of incarceration. Our young men that we're maturing up so that they don't follow in our footsteps. We have to make sure that we are thoroughly checking on them. This is not diminishing women and children because I will make another episode geared towards women and children and how we feel about suicide and our statistics and things as well. I'm just gearing this one towards men because it's an urgent need for men to hear that they matter enough to not take their lives okay we need to do better in filtering ourselves out the healthy way so that we can go and refilter these men that have lost substance and identities and things of that nature by just not having someone to really sit and listen to them and care beloveds it is a hard task to try and undo what the world has done. It seems near impossible. However, we can do it if we use our tools. We can do it if we take that five to ten minutes out of our day to look up and research how to help someone who is expressing or displaying suicidal thoughts, ideas, if they're saying they're having hallucinations or visual things that's a little off to us, okay, to know the healthy way and healthy avenues to take to get them help, to get these men help. Now, for my black and brown community, when I say in my videos to call 911, I am absolutely aware that for us, that is very scary and it makes us timid because of everything that is going on with our community naturally just for more than 400 and something years where we call for help and we're the ones that end up dead i get it i understand remember i have brothers so my concern is an understanding concern because i know and y'all know what i'm talking about okay if you don't feel safe enough to call the police department or 911 call someone that you absolutely have trust in to come and get you and lead you to where you need to be if they have to call for safety for you if they have to take you to grandma's house so that you can calm down get a little prayer get a little oil get a little meal a little cornbread by all means necessary, take that route. But if it gets out of control, we have to learn how to ask for help. Men, y'all have to take the notion to not be so manly 
and keep your mouth shut and to open up your mouth and say, I am really affected. This is really affecting me. These feelings and these emotions are bubbling up to the surface and I'm about to crack. I need help. When we take the time to learn, when somebody comes to sit at our table and say, I really need help. My mental status is dwindling. We can do the right things in a healthy way, in a healthy manner that saves everybody's life. That saves everybody's feelings, that saves everybody's emotions, and that is a good fit for the one that is struggling to come out with a healthy and expected end of sanity. Okay? We have to learn how to do that. The key is in learning. You can't wake up and be like, I know exactly what to do. If this person comes to me and says they're suicidal, no, you don't. You got to learn we're not taught to speak on it so if we're not taught to speak on it we're not taught to know any languages any verbiage you everybody has to understand when you know your loved ones at their core the physicality things that they do you'll start to pick up on how odd their behavior is coming how they're ruminating on thoughts and they're just back and they're going back and forth and just fiddling a certain body language um positions that you need to be looking out for like kinesthetically it's some hand movements eye gestures feet rattling things that they do if you're sleepy with someone that is struggling you should know the signs of them grinding their teeth in their sleep yes we know it's linked to um it's linked to a hyper activity of your body needing rest also linked to your mind doing way too much in a spiritual sense and it starts to come out in different ways and those subtle ways that you just think that is an abnormality of someone is really their body and their fight or flight system kicking in to say i need help i want overload i need help i want overload if we learn those we save a lives y'all and what's better than saving life tell me i'll wait Nothing. What's better than saving someone's life? What's better than helping save someone's life? Hmm? Exactly. Nothing. It takes it takes for somebody to be courageous enough to sit five minutes and just say, okay, when they said this, this is what it meant. I should do this for that. If they say they need help, I should ask them what their help looks like. If they're comfortable with 911, if they're comfortable with Auntie, Auntie Sheena. If this is what it is, we need to have game plans. We need to have backups. We need to have rosters of what help looks like for our community, especially for our black men, brown men, yellow men, especially for our community, y'all, seriously. We need to know the signs. We need to know the warnings. We need to know what their situations are, what their circumstances are. We need to stop heckling these men, women. I myself was a heckler. And I have apologized and grown. Thank God for Jesus, okay? And learn my mistakes so that I can now not nag a man to death. Because y'all know men hate nagging. But I can actually say, yo... Something's not right. Are you okay? And mean it. Any more questions, any more comments, any more concerns, I am more than willing to help guide you with direction, sound direction. Now, I ain't going to lead you wrong because I need people to be saved as in saving their lives because it's they say 136 people perish daily from suicide. That's too much for me. And I know some people are waiting to hear me say, 2,000 people die by the hand of suicide. It doesn't have to be that much. It doesn't. Just one is enough. Some One person in this U.S., this continent, taking their life, that's sorrowful to me. And by all means necessary, I want to do the best that I can to diminish it and to make it stop. Because it's heartbreaking. Okay, I'm loving on anybody in this moment that ever felt inadequate. I'm loving on anybody in this moment that ever felt like they weren't good enough, that were 
told that they weren't good enough. I'm loving on anybody in this moment that was physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually abused. Anybody, which is all of us, that has experienced trauma because we all have. To, I'm loving on you at this moment. And I'm infusing your atmosphere with my speech with good, healthy, hearty, thick cornbread in an iron skillet at grandma's house, huh? I'm pushing that goodness into your atmosphere so that you can take from this video peace of mind, knowing that you are loved. Somebody that does not know who you are is telling you that you are loved and that you are worth it and that you are worthy of every good thing that this life has for you. So keep waking up, please. You're worth it. Keep trying every day. Please, you're worth it. Keep knowing that you have value and know that even if you do or don't have family members or friends that cherish you, I do. I'm telling y'all, my loved one, he really woke my family up so that we can see who we need to touch and who we need to let know that they're loved. All right. I love you guys. Um, follow me on Instagram at the Comfy Couch LLC. One, follow me on Facebook at the Comfy Couch with my logo. Follow the regular network, and I really, really hope that you guys are listening to what I'm saying, so that we can help each other. Help each other. We can help each other. Help each other, and make this world beautiful again. Okay, y'all. I love you guys. <laughs>